Welcome back, it's Sony Creek Spark Chaser, and I got another great video for you today. This one's going to be about repairing the end of a low voltage charging cable. Uh, this is a 4.2 volt one. Uh, these are found on like your hair clippers, hair trimmers. I even have some stereos over here that use the same style plug. Computers also can use this same plug if they're like an older vintage. But um, basically what happens, from us repeatedly putting it into the device to charge it and then pulling it out to use it. The insulation breaks down right where it goes into the plug. Copper starts to show, it separates, and you can no longer charge it. And then people will just take the whole device and throw it away, wasting maybe 20, 30, 40 bucks. So in this video, I'll show you how to repair that. Um, it's a bit more technical than the last video I did about replacing the 120 plug-ins on my heater and my fan that my dog chewed through. This one's going to have us be using a soldering iron, so if you don't have one, this is a good item to get just to have in your arsenal. Uh, they're cheap, inexpensive, they're fairly easy to use, and they're just good to have around. Um, so if you don't know how to use one, I'll show you just the basics on how to use one to repair this plug. So yeah, so uh, I just don't want you guys to just think you have to throw away everything that breaks. Most of the stuff that breaks in your household, we can fix it. So let's try and fix this one and make it work like new. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the cable and see if there's any markings on it to help us identify which wire goes to what part of the plug right here. And as you can see on this wire right here, there's white stripes that go down the entire length of it. And on this side, there's just some little bit of white writing. So what I like to do, I like to take a piece of tape, doesn't matter what color it is, and I'll just put it on the side of the plug right here where the white cable go, where the white stripe cable or wire goes into the plug, just so I know when I cut this apart, uh, what side has the white portion on it. And once we, um, cause we're gonna take our knife and we're actually going to cut this flexible rubber part away here, the white will still be on that part of the cable. So let's cut this off and then we'll uh, start the repair. Okay, so you wanna be very, very careful taking off this flexible rubber part right here. So just take your X-Acto blade and just lightly score down and then you can score down on this side and then you can go down the middle here and just take some of that off. Uh, I'm not too concerned if you nick the wire anywhere uh, down here because we're actually, we can take a bunch of that off to get a, a nice piece. But if you look down the center of where those ribs are there, you can actually see where the wire is still separated. So just kind of take your blade and just go down like that. Once that's done, you can actually take your just your fingernail here and just rip that off. So there you go. So as you can see here, the whole thing is off and now I have the wires exposed underneath this portion here. Okay, so now all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take just a pair of scissors or a pair of strippers and just cut anywhere on the cable that's existing. Throw off to the side for right now. Let's work on this. So what I want you to do is take your blade and we're gonna just take it down the center and we're gonna separate these two wires right here. And you can kind of see uh, this one's like totally broken. This one's still kind of in intact. But remember, this is our white wire, which is depicted by our red piece of tape right here. So now we can take our pair of scissors and we can cut the portion off that is broken. So now we're left with uh, two wires right here that are good for us to solder. So this one's already kind of loose, so I can just pull the insulation off. Look at that, it just came right off and it exposed the copper uh, underneath it. And then the same thing for this one right here, this is a little bit tougher. So I'm gonna use uh, my blade again. I'm gonna score around very gently so I don't cut the copper because this copper is very brittle. And once that's done, just run it right down the center. 
and then you can pull that off. So now we have two pieces of copper showing for each wire. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this other side here. We're gonna do the same thing. Let's just score it down uh, about an inch. It's probably pretty good. And then again, we can take our strippers or use our razor blade and strip it out. I'm gonna use the strippers because it's a little bit uh, easier to use. And just like that. And then make sure you twist these to keep the copper together. Okay, now since we have everything separated and our wires are twisted, we're going to tin the end of our copper wires. And this is going to help us in the future connecting the two together. So all I want you to do, make sure it's on nothing that can melt, is we're going to take our wire, we're going to put our soldering iron on top of it, heat up for a little bit, and then take our solder, and then just um, lightly touch the copper, and you should see the um, solder soak into the copper. Now I'm not using flux because this is a uh, rosin core, so it has flux already inside of it. But once you get the copper on, uh, the solder on are nice and even, it should, um, if it's hot enough, it should wick into the copper itself. I don't have a very good soldering iron, to be honest with you. It's pretty cheap. There you go. Okay. All right, so that's that end done. And then let's take this end and we'll do this one as well. Kind of need like another hand, huh? Don't be afraid to use it. There we go. Okay, so now we can go ahead and solder the two pieces together. But before that, I want you guys to take and find some heat shrink. This is easy to find on Amazon in big kits with all different sizes and colors. And we're gonna slide on like a medium one. And then I have two smaller ones too that they're gonna go over the each individual wires. And that's going to, once we're done soldering, we can slide these up and cover our solder and then heat it up to prevent um, the copper and copper right here to touch each other and short out. Now I went ahead and I soldered one together. It was kind of tricky because you almost need like a third person just to keep stuff stable. So I went ahead, it took a little bit of time for that to eventually heat up. But now since one's heated up, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to uh, do the last one here. So again, make sure you have your, uh, I have my white wire here on my red side. So I know this wire is gonna go on this side. And uh, once you, so you have your solder on there right now, take your soldering iron, and just place it against both of these. It's gonna take a little time to heat up. There you go, once you hold on there for a little bit, just keep it held on there, let the two kind of weld together. Just like that, and it becomes one piece. Okay, now that our soldering is done, I know it looks sloppy, but trust me, it's not gonna come apart. It's pretty solid. We have our heat shrink on there already. We can take our heat shrink, we can push one end up, make sure no copper is uh, touching the other wire, which it's not. And then once it's up in a good spot, we're gonna hold it tight with our thumb here, and we're gonna take our lighter and we're just gonna um, lightly go around it. And it's gonna shrink to a nice size around that wire, um, really getting a nice seal to prevent contact. Okay, so once that, see that was pretty good, right? 
Then we'll take this other one. We'll do the same thing on this one. Hold it tight with our thumb. Take our lighter. We'll just lightly go around it and shrink it on the wire. Lighter will get hot, so just be careful. And come back here. It's super cold in here too, so my lighter is just like, I'm not liking it. Okay, so now we have no copper touching each other. Take the other piece that we slid, the medium size, and we can go and cover up both of these like this. And we'll just cover it up like that. And we'll heat this on here too. If you have like a, uh, like a heat gun, this is a good time to use a, a heat gun too. It works a lot faster and it's a lot more effective. The lighter works just as good. Now, finally, we I have a bigger piece of heat shrink right here. And this one, I'm just gonna kind of cut it so it um, goes from here to here. So about, uh, about an inch long. Just take my knife, cut a chunk like this. Like I said, this all just came from a kit from Amazon. Super cheap. I'm good to have it in house. And then we'll go like this. And we'll melt this down as well. Okay, so I just want to quick show you the end result after we're all done with um, our soldering and then putting the heat shrink on. It looks fairly factory. Um, all this heat shrink is giving you a lot of nice um, uh, tightness where um, you can use this to pull and push it into the device where you don't have to worry about anything coming apart and breaking in the future. So you'll get a lot more life out of your device and yeah. That's a fixed cable end on your low voltage cord. That's gonna basically wrap up the video. The repair turned out really nice. The heat shrink is gonna add strength to the cable so you won't get any more bending where it goes into the plug here. Now, I the soldering. I know my electrician friends are gonna give me so much crap about that because I did butcher that solder job. The joints just look horrible, but it's all hidden underneath this uh, nice, lovely heat shrink but the joints are strong. It's just my soldering iron, it's old, it's cheap. I need to get a new one. It doesn't get as hot. So yeah, it just did not turn out the way I wanted it to. Uh, to help out too, you can make yourself a jig that you can actually use to hold the two pieces together. And then, you can, then you're able to put more pressure on those joints. I actually do have one that I made. It's right here. I just don't know why I didn't use it. But anyway, um, leave me a question or comment down below if you have any other Anything else you want to add to this uh, video? Um, I do appreciate you watching it. And until next time, take it easy.